All right, everyone. Welcome back to the CT70 Garage. Today we're going to do a another electrical video, and we're going to take a good look at the Trail Buddy a company, uh, a parts company up in the Michigan that does a lot of uh, Honda Mini parts. A company called Trail Buddy has this harness. They refer to it as a universal harness, meaning that it's not really in. It's not built specifically for any one bike. Uh, you can use this in a Z50 or a Trail 70 or a S65 or whatever you're, you are, you're throwing an aftermarket uh, Lifen or Piranha engine in. This is just a universal harness um, and it's going to have some, some um, wiring and, and some items in it that we're not going to use for our application, which is going to be a 1977 Honda CT70. So I'm going to open it up. Uh, we'll kind of take a look at it. And then I am going to strip it apart, pare it down, and take out the wires that I'm not going to use for my application. And then we will we'll kind of pick the video up from there. But uh, again, this is the Trail Buddy Universal Harness. The part number is TB422, and I want to say as of uh, March of 2021, it retails for somewhere around $55 plus tax and shipping, if I'm not mistaken. So go to their website to get exact numbers. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this opened up. <clears throat> I've used a handful of these over the years. Uh, it actually has been probably close to a year since I've used one. So I may need a little refresher course myself, but uh, it does come, it's not really a schematic, it's just a kind of a printed um, readout of you know the horn, what color the wires are, and what function. Handlebar controls, speedometer, coil, you know, front turn signals. There's even some things on the back <clears throat> and kind of describes what each wire does. We'll keep that close just in case we need to refer to it. Now, I've always been impressed with these. They are pretty well made. Um, I will say that depending on the bike you're going to put it on, you know, install this into, you might need to make a few modifications. Um, I put this in a Honda S65 one time, and which was is a bigger bike, and the taillight wires just weren't quite long enough to reach, you know, all the way out to the taillight, so I had to lengthen those. So um, when you buy a universal harness, just be prepared that you are going to have to make, you know, a few slight modifications to it so but it's a uh, it, it's a quality unit um, it's got some wiring in it right here that is for electric start and I don't I'm not don't have a bike with an electric start so I'm going to take that out um, there are as you can see the the headlight has just a slew of different wiring so we're going to cut this all apart and I'm going to remove anything that I don't need, you know, from my particular bike. So I think what I'm going to do is shut you guys off. I'm going to get this all ready, get, uh, get it down, take out the wires that I don't need and then bring you back. And then we will start discussing what we have. Okay. So I have stripped down most of the wrapping off of the harness, I've left a few things wrapped because we're gonna we're not changing anything within those wraps, so we'll leave those alone. <laughs> and I'm sure there are some of you going, "Oh my God, what in the world have you done?" Um, hopefully, I can make this somewhat simple. Uh, this is all just the wrap that came off of it. Um, these. I may go back and put these on. These were, one of them was around all the taillight wires and the other one was around the group of engine wires. 
We'll see if I put those back on. Probably not, but I might. And then this big bulky thing was all up here for the wires that go up to the headlight. And it really doesn't need to be that big and bulky. We're just gonna wrap all this in some, some tape uh, and make it much a much smaller fit and uh, it'll look pretty nice. So, got it all torn apart. This is up at the headlight bucket. And most guys go, wow, that is just a disaster and I have no idea what I'm looking at. But let me show you something. As soon as you get it unwrapped, those wires just fall out. Uh, I think the diagram says the pink was for the low beam, yellow and white was a high beam, gr uh, horn ground, and I'm not sure exactly what those are. But they fell out. And guess what? We don't need them. So we're not going to use them. Uh, that was pretty simple there. So that, that gets us a few wires down. There is a yellow wire with a red stripe right here. This goes to an electric start. And we don't have electric start so that is a wire we can get rid of. All right, so now we're down a little bit more manageable, okay? But let me show you something. If you spread this out, hopefully I'm keeping you in camera here. what looks like just a slew of wires is really only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. It's a lot of them have, like that's a, this is a ground wire, okay? And look at all the different grounds, the ends that they put on that. Now we're gonna leave them on there for right now, uh, to see what we need and what we don't need. Looks like there are four females, single females, and a double female. The blue and orange are for turn signals. Um, so, I'll go through it in a little bit, but we're gonna take one of each of these off. Um, we don't have a speedometer with a turn signal I don't think, no, we don't. Uh, we don't have a speedometer that's got a turn signal flasher in it, so we won't need one of those. These are uh, tail light and speedometer illumination wires, so when the key's on and bike's running and lights up your tail light and it lights up your speedometer, that's what that is. This is the, the, the yellow one is what powers the headlight. All of these blacks are just 12 volt hot when the key is on and the battery's hooked up. The green and yellow stripe is for the uh, brake switch, turn the, the brake light on. The green and white is for the neutral indicator light. And the gray is for the turn signals. To, it powers the turn signal switch. It's pretty simple, actually. So what I'm going to do is go through and tape this all back up and get it cleaned up and get it the way I want it. And then we will take a few minutes and actually walk through it and discuss what each wire does, and we'll probably go ahead and I'll pull some parts out and even hook lights up and throw a battery to this so that you can actually see it working and what it's supposed to do. So let me get this taped up and cleaned up first. I'll be right back. So through the magic of being able to start and stop a video, 
here we are back together again. Um, I think let's just take a second and walk through this thing, kind of talk about what they do, and then we will pull a bike up here and let's actually kind of just lay it out on a bike and plug it in and see if we can't make it work. I always find that the back end is, uh, is a little easier to understand, uh, to, to some, a better place to start. So that's where we're going to start at, back at the, uh, the tail light end of the harness. Obviously, this big red is uh, big red wires for the positive on your 12 volt battery. Um, it has two spots here. I, I didn't, I meant to do it and I forgot to do it. Um, but I'm just going to cut this big one off. That goes to uh, the electric start solenoid, which we are not going to use. So uh, now it's a little. Doesn't look quite as intimidating, and I'll, I'll clean that up and fix that in a little bit. But uh, So anyway, positive battery, green, negative battery. Pretty simple. This plug, and all these plugs are unique. You can't plug anything wrong into them. This plug has four wires, uh, red, white, yellow, and green, and it is for a voltage regulator. Looks like that and just plugs in, plugs into the end of that. Pretty simple. Uh, the, oh, I'm sorry. We also have, along with the ground wire that goes to the battery, there's also a ground wire with an eyelet that goes, you can hook it to the frame. Now these two wires are joined together here inside the harness, but this just ensure, ens ensures that your frame is good and grounded uh, with the battery and so forth. So that's what that is. This is for your CDI. And there again, it's just plug and play. Pop that on there, you're good to go. So the last thing at the tail light end are the lights or are the wires that go to the tail light. You've got a green with a yellow stripe that is for the brake light, comes from the, the brake, uh, foot brake and handbrake switches to illuminate the brake light. The brown, solid brown, is for illumination of your tail light. When you turn the key, um, on this particular bike I'm doing, it will be wired straight to the key switch. Uh, I don't have a on-off switch for the headlights. I have a high-low, but not an on-off. So. When I turn my key on and start my bike, my tail light will be lit up through that brown wire. We've got a green wire with a single female that will be a ground wire for the tail light. So those three go to the tail light. The other three wires are turn signals. You've got a double female ground and then a blue and an orange for a left and right turn signal. And that's all that goes out the back. Moving up the harness, you've got a gray wire and a black wire with this uh, plug in, and it is for a 12 volt flasher for your turn signals. Move up a little bit farther, you've got a green ground wire and a black with a gold stripe wire. That is for your 12 volt coil. And it's my particular coil has the exact same two color wires, green to green, black and gold to black and gold. Pretty simple. Uh, typically, if your coil has two wires, it does not need to be grounded to the body. This one has a uh, post that you could, you know, for mounting it so it doesn't just flop around, but uh, I believe it gets its ground from the green wire. If your coil only has one wire, a black one or a black and gold one, then it re does require the coil to be grounded to the body. And that's, that's why it only has the one wire. All right, move up a little bit farther, and you've got a green with a yellow stripe and a black wire. This is for your foot brake switch. And easily, 
confused with these two because the colors are very similar. So make sure that you green and yellow and the black go to your foot brake. Green and black and gold go to the coil. Move up a little bit farther on the harness and you've got a green and a black and white. And that is for a kill switch or a kill button or you know whatever you have to kill the bike. Uh, if you're using a just a key to kill the bike, you won't use this. Uh, my bike does have a run off switch and I want it to work so it will get wired into these two wires here to ground out the coil and, or the CDI and kill the bike. Next group of wires are the wires that plug into the life and engine that we're going to use. Uh, the green with the white stripe is the neutral indicator. Solid green is ground. The black and red, and in this case, it's red and white. Typically, most, most engines I've seen is, are blue and white wires, uh, but these two are go to the stator for the pulse coil and so forth, send the signal to the CDI. And then the yellow wire is for from your stator for the lighting coil, and white is for charging the battery and, and so forth. Okay, that's, and those should just be all plug and play on our life and the only, like I said, the only difference will be is that my life and is going to have a blue and white and this is red and white. Moving up, you've got a plug in and I didn't grab a key switch, but this is where your key switch, four wire key switch just plugs right into that. And then you go out the bike and up to the headlight. And uh, we kind of talked about these a little bit already, but uh, anything, anything that is black, solid black, is 12 volts hot when you turn the key on. That's what those are. Anything that is brown is for illumination of speedometer lights um, and the tail light. Okay. Anything that is solid green is, a, is just a ground. It's got, it gives you plenty of those. So all those are, are grounds. Green with a yellow stripe, that's uh, going to be for your front brake switch. Green with a white stripe is the neutral indicator. Gray is the power for your uh, turn signals for the blinkers. Yellow is the power for the headlight. So in this case, the headlight will only come on when the engine is running. You know, this, this yellow wire doesn't get power until the bike is running. So uh, even though when you turn the key on, your tail light will come on, your headlight won't come on until you actually fire up the bike and, and get it running. Uh, and then blue and orange are turn signal wires. So, all right, we're going to clean the table off, roll the bike up here. I probably won't put it within the bike. I probably would just kind of lay the harness out onto the bike, plug things in, uh, put a battery to it, and that way you can kind of see it all work and. Hope so anyway, so uh, let me get set up and let's get a bike up on the table. Okay, so I've got a bike up here on the lift and we're just going to drape our harness over the bike for right now. And we're gonna start at the back and kind of walk through how all this plugs together. The first thing I'm going to do is the ground wire that had the little eyelet on it. I'm going to bolt it to the frame just so that I know the frame and the engine and the harness. Everything is grounded together. Just hand tight should be good enough. Uh, we have our plugs back here for our Voltage regulator. 
And that just plugs right in. We have a plug for our CDI, electronic ignition, that plugs in. Uh, these are the battery leads. We're gonna hook a battery charger to it here in a few minutes when we get ready to test the harness. So we'll just leave those off to the side for now. We've got the wires that go back to the tail light. <clears throat> So let's see, let's do some turn signal wires first. So I've got a orange and a blue that are coming from my turn signals. So those just colors just match up, blue to blue, orange to orange. Now I don't need to use a ground wire for the turn signals because they are grounded to the frame. Um, if your turn signals have two wires, then you know you, one of them would be a ground wire that you'd need to plug in. All right, my tail light is an aftermarket tail light. It is not a uh, stock tail light, so it does not have the correct stock color wiring. So on this particular tail light, the green, or I'm sorry, the the black and white is a ground. So I'm going to plug it into the green ground. So if yours has a uh, green wire, you just plug it into the green ground. On mine, the red wire is for the brake lights, and I'm gonna plug it into the green and yellow. If you have a, the stock tail light that has a green and yellow uh, brake light wire, you just plug it into the green and yellow. And then the same way, if yours is stock, you'll have a brown tail light wire. I have a black one. So I'm going to plug it into the brown. And I should have my brake lights and my tail lights and turn signals plugged in. I've got my two units here plugged in. <clears throat> we'll wait on the battery. The next thing up the line is the flasher for the turn signals. So I'll just plug that in. All right, next thing up the line is the uh, brake switch wires. You've got a, a black hot lead, 12 volt, and then the green and yellow that sends the power on out to the brake light itself. Now the switch is over here on the, on the side underneath the muffler. And the wiring is down inside the um, down inside the frame, and the colors and the plugs all match up. So I'm just going to plug green and yellow to green and yellow, and black to black. Okay. The next lines are for my coil. And I have a green to green and black and gold to black and gold. Okay. So that's for the coil. The next one up is the kill button wires. Now I had to um, make a modification here. Um, because the kill wires for the kill switch, the plug was, is right here down here by the frame, but my kill button that's up on the handlebars, the wires run to the uh, inside the headlight bucket. So I had to add another wire, black and white wire, that go up to the headlight. That and I went ahead and I could have just hooked it directly and just taped it all up. But I just, I went ahead and put a connector on it. But, uh, so we've got a, a kill wire that goes up to the headlight. The next group of wires are the engine wires. Where are they at? Right here. All right, so this is mostly plug and play. Uh, white to white for the charging. Yellow to yellow for my lights. I'll plug in there. I guess it's plugged in. Didn't feel like it popped. Uh, 
let's see, we should have a green and green for ground. We should have a black and red and black and red. All right, the engine has a green with a red stripe for the neutral indicator light. The harness has a green with a white stripe. Those go together. And then the last wire, the engine has a blue and white wire and the harness has a red and white wire for the pickup, but those go together. Okay, the one change I had to do here, the harness had a, on the green ground, it had a female, is that what it had? No, it had a male. The green ground on the harness was a male and the green ground on the engine were male, so I had to put a female plug and I did it on the harness side. And that was the only change I made so far, uh, well, and I added that kill wire, I guess. So everything up through there. All right, the next thing in line is the four wire key switch. And that just plugs right into the harness. Make sure your wires all match up to the correct colors. Some key switches, the wires are a different orientation. All right, so I think that is everything up to the headlight. So I'm going to readjust and move you guys to get a better view of the headlight. Okay, I've got you looking at the headlight bucket. Now, there's just not much room up here, and it's super hard to kind of keep everything separated so it's easy to see. So just bear with me. Uh, I'll try and go slow and explain this the best that I can. Um, so let's, this is all the wires from the harness. This is everything from the, um, from the headlights. So let's just pick a couple things here and go. First, was, this orange wire is sticking up here out of the way. So let's just go ahead and grab it. That's the left turn signal. And you just want to pick, there's two orange ones in your harness. Just pick one. They're tied together. It doesn't make any difference which one. Uh, yeah, there, I got it. Okay, so we've got that orange plugged in. Let's go ahead and grab the blue one from that goes over to the right turn signal. And we need a light blue wire for it. Again, it doesn't, there's two of them. It doesn't make any difference which one. There's that. These two wires are kind of standing out and looking like they need attention. So we will grab those. Those go to the horn. So you've got a black and a light green. The black needs 12 volt power. So we grab one of our black wires from in our harness and it's got a female fitting to go with the male fitting on the, wire, the horn wire. So we'll plug that in. And then the light green is actually the ground. The power is going in the horn it's got 12 volts, it's coming back out, but the loop has stopped right here at this green wire because it's not connected. So it needs to connect to the horn button up on the left handlebar. So that is the light green wire that is in the harness that goes up to the left handlebar. And so you'll plug those in. And so now when you hit the horn button and it finishes the circuit, grounds that out in the horn, hopefully make some kind of noise. All right, what else do we have over here? Let's get some of these. Uh, these, this looks to be the kill, the green ground. I need a green ground, any of them. They're all tied together. So I've got the green ground plugged into the green of a harness and then the black and white of the kill button goes to the wire that we added into the harness. Okay, so we've got that. What's next? 
Now we've got, these are for the front brake switch. When you pull the front brake lever, we've got a solid black, which needs 12 volts. So let's find a, a black from the harness, plug that in. And then the green and yellow is going to go to the green and yellow that's in the harness. Okay. Got all those. Got that. We'll save the speedometer for last. Let's go ahead and tackle the rest of the wires in this harness that go up to the handlebar. All right. So we have uh, another orange and a, another light blue. So there should be one more of each of those in the harness. There's an orange. And there is the light blue. Got those. Okay. In this harness that goes up to the handlebar is a light gray wire. Now that is the wire that powers the turn signal switch. So we need to find, there should be a gray wire in the harness. Here it is. So those are gonna plug just directly together. So now you've got power 12 volts coming up the gray wire up to the, the switch on the handlebars and in the middle position it just dies right there and then when you put it left or right then it either comes down the orange or the light blue wire. So the last three remaining wires in that harness that go up to the handlebars are a blue with a white stripe, a blue, and a white. And this gets plugged into some of these get plugged into your handlebars. So we're going to take the solid blue, the high beam wire, and plug it into one of the dual fittings on the headlight. And then the white just plugs into white. The headlight needs ground, so we need to find a green ground. All right, and then the last wire in that harness was this blue with the white stripe. And this is what powers the switch, the high-low switch. And that is going to get plugged into the yellow. All right. So, you could do it two ways. <clears throat> I'm going to choose to plug it into the yellow. The headlight will only come on when the engine is running. That yellow wire is only powered with the engine running. So, right now... Uh, we don't have a tank or anything in it. I can't start the engine, so we won't actually see the headlight work. Um, but if you wanted to, you could plug this blue and white one into one of the black wires of the harness, and then the headlight would come on with the key, get power from the battery. Uh, but we're going to use it from the, uh, from the yellow from the stator. Okay, so now I know we've got a mess. Stick with me. We've got everything plugged in except for this group of wires right here, and they go to the speedometer. Well, in that are two solid greens, which are just grounds, so we need to find a couple greens in our harness here. Plug those in. Because remember, all those greens are just tied together. It doesn't make any difference which one you tie it, plug it into. Uh, okay, and those two greens go with the blue, which is the high beam indicator in the speedometer. So it needs to get plugged into this, the other side of the dual male plug on the headlight. So when you put it in the high beam setting, it all, not only turns on the headlight, it turns on the light that's in the speedometer. And then the, this brown wire with a little bit of a red stripe is the illumination for the speedometer. And you want to pick one of the brown wires in the harness. 
these plugs are pretty tight. There we go. There it popped together. All right. So that leaves us with two wires that are not plugged in yet. I think. A couple, two or three. So the last two wires in the speedometer harness are a solid black, which there again goes to the solid black in the harness for power. And then the green with a red stripe is the neutral indicator light. And we should have, ours was green with a white stripe. That's this wire right here. Now I did have to modify that wire up here both of these had a female fitting. Uh, I didn't want to ruin the speedometer uh, harness, so I, I changed it on the, the trail buddy harness. I changed it to a male fitting. So it just plugs into there. And the last thing we need to plug in is we need to send power back to the tail light. And that's through this one of these brown wires and it's just going to get fed from one of the black wires of the harness 12 volts so my tail light is going to come on anytime i have the key on the headlight will only come on with the engine but if there is a battery hooked up to the bike and you turn the key on the tail light will come on now it won't come on without a battery hooked up it will come on as soon as the bike is started uh, even without a battery, but uh, so guys, I, I realize that might be you might have to watch that a couple times. Um, and we got a few wires in here that didn't get used. There's an extra ground that didn't get used, another brown uh, that didn't get used in the harness. I probably could go ahead and eliminate those if I wanted to. They're not going to hurt anything, but everything else seems to be plugged in. So I think we're ready to test test this and see how it goes. So I am going to take a battery charger. Let me get spun around here. Sorry, I'm shaking you. I got you all zoomed in too. I'll take a uh, lead and hook 12 volts. So I'm just hooking 12 volts to the red side of the battery plug and this I'm gonna take the ground plug and do the same with that so now I've got the negative side of the battery charger so that essentially is the same as having a battery hooked up so now if we grab the key we should get, now if we turn the key on, yay, we've got illumination. We even got our neutral indicator light is on. The only other thing that should be on is our tail light. We shouldn't have a headlight or anything. Nope, no turn signals. And we do, we've got a tail light. And if we, see if I can do this, if we hit the foot brake, it gets brighter. Now I'm going to reach up and do the hand brake. And so we've got our brake lights work. Let's go around and check our turn signals. So I'm going to turn this to a left turn signal and we should see that to start flash. It is. And is this one? This one is flashing. Those are not. Turn it to the other way. And we've got that. Horn. Oh, we've got a sad horn or it. Oh, oh there it's coming into it. We may have to do some work to the horn, but the horn button does work. Um, what else do we need to try? Oh, uh, 
the neutral indicator light is on. So I'm gonna pull up on the, and put the bike in gear. And it went out. Back down to neutral. Awesome. So I think the last thing I need to check is to make sure it has spark and that our kill button. Let me get you set up here. Grab the spark plug wire. And I'm gonna guess you guys, let me zoom you in as much as I can. It's probably too light in here to see it. Yeah, I can see it. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see that. My hand might even be in the way. Let me check and make, I'm going to turn my uh, run and off switch off on the handlebar. And that does kill the sparks. So, awesome. So, I think we're good to go. Turn our key back off. Well, guys, I appreciate you following along. I hope that wasn't. Uh, too confusing. Can't get to seem to get you zoom back in. Oh well. I know it looks like a mess, but uh, it's really not too hard if you kind of take your time. And on this particular harness, a lot of the coloring does line up color for color. At least it did for this 1977 CT70. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I will answer as many as I can and help you as best as I can. Everybody have a great day. Thanks.